Investment banking, as we all know, is the most famous, demanded and highest paying industry in the world. Every finance enthusiast or any individual who wants to pursue their career into the field of finance had at least once dreamt of entering into investment banking domain. Everyone thinks somewhere or the other through any ways they can enter into investment banking profile. But from the rich and glamorous lifestyle which everyone expects, there is a huge, highly greater work pressure which everyone cannot tolerate. Many fail to tolerate that kind of work pressure which is there in the investment banking industry. Right? Hello everyone, I am Naman Jain, I am co-founder of Incradle and in today's video, I will try to give you a clear perspective about investment banking industry, what kind of work structure is followed there and what are those skills which every investment banker needs to master into. An investment bank is a financial services company which, provide, uh, which performs similar function as that of a commercial bank but with a different set of clients. Their clients mainly contain government, uh, large corporations, uh, high net worth individuals etc. The main job of investment banker is to bridge the gap between big companies or government who require funds and capital and those who have fund and they want to invest in the projects and uh, businesses of these companies. Uh, investment banks perform a lot of different functions. Let's talk about these functions in detail. First function among these is advisory services. Investment bank provides advisory services to many of its clients. Often in some situations, investment bank enter into these transactions on the behalf of their clients. Advisory services includes decisions involving strategic planning, business valuations, financial restructurings, etc. Also, investment bank provides analysis to their clients whether the particular transaction is fair to them or not, whether they can do it in a better way or not, whether it would be beneficial for their business or not. They assist them in mergers and acquisition transactions as well with their advising techniques. They also guide them if they need some kind of requirements and what is the best source of raising funds, whether equity or debt would be beneficial for their business structure. Next function in this list is risk management. Risk management involves analyzing the different aspects of risk which investment bank or their clients might be facing. Credit risk focuses on the capital market activities such as bond issuance, capital restructuring, leverage finance, etc. Whereas market risk focuses on the sales and trading perspective of transactions and conducting these tests using valuation and risk models. Other aspects of risk such as country risk, operational risk depends upon different kind of banks and different kind of activities they are incorporating. Next function in the list is M&A. Mergers and acquisitions are facilitated by the investment banks. Investment banks helps to establish a fair value for the companies involved in the transaction. They also act as a middleman between both the companies and helps in deciding all the necessary terms and conditions for the transaction. They are, you all, all of us know a very uh, famous acquisition which happened few years back. That is WhatsApp acquisition which was done by Facebook. Facebook paid a whooping amount of $16 billion to WhatsApp in which which $4 billion was paid at, as cash and $12 billion was paid as equity of Facebook to the WhatsApp owners. Facebook also paid an additional amount of $3.6 billion to the employees of WhatsApp just to have them working in the same structure uh, as they were working prior to the acquisition. In this deal, Allen and company advised as an investment banker to Facebook and they charged a hefty amount of $40 million. Similar fee was charged by Morgan and Stanley which were the investment bankers for the WhatsApp side. That is the kind of money these guys make in a single transaction deal. Apart from this function, investment banks also assist other companies in raising funds through underwriting process. Underwriting is the process in which investment banks buy the securities or assets of a particular company and sells them to a third party. That is, they act as a middleman between the corporates and the investors. In the process of underwriting, investment banks provide a guarantee to the company who is issuing an IPO. If the IPO is undersubscribed, an investment bank will buy the undersubscribed portion of shares and then sell those shares to the investors. Here is a risk for the investment bank. If investment bank fails to sell those shares to the investors and if the share price falls in the market of that particular company, investment bank will bear that loss. But for the complete underwriting process, they charge a huge amount of fees from that company. Higher is the risk, higher is the reward.
Another major function performed by investment banks is that of securities research or we can say equity research. In this equity research function, investment bank tries to create research reports. They analyze the market and create enough comparison data and do equity research of that particular company and they give an opinion whether to buy, hold or sell the security. They also try to compare the research reports of various companies to analyze which sector is performing good or which sector is uh, in demand or which sector is overvalued or undervalued. As an industry, investment bank is divided into two parts, bulge bracket investment banks and boutique investment banks. Bulge bracket investment banks are those multinational banks which comprises and performs all the major functions of investment banking, be it m &A, research, advisory, underwriting or whatever the function is, they perform all the major functions of investment banking. You can take many examples like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan Chase, Morgan & Stanley, Barclays, etc, etc, etc. Whereas in boutique investment bank, these are smaller investment banks which specializes in one or two particular aspects of investment banking and they perform those functions for their clients. There are many examples of M&A advisories like uh, Blackstone or Jafferies and Company and Green Hill and Company etc. The organization structure of every investment bank is divided into two parts that is front end and back end office. In front end office the main job of investment banker is to interact with the clients directly and try to fulfill the requirements of those clients whatever service they want. The main part here lies in the sales and trading perspective. Investment banker provides as a, a provides the functions of broker and trader to its institutional clients. Whereas in back office the main job is to provide full technical support and full informative support to the front office. They are responsible for the the actions which front office takes. They perform all the necessary advisory functions, all the necessary valuations, research and guide the actions of front end bankers. That is why we say that back office is the right part to become an investment banker as they are the ones who are performing all the major functions related to investment banking. An investment banking career is very high demanding. Frequently analysts work in over 100 hours in a week. But obviously the compensation is very high and the work is very high profile. The major skills which an investment banker must hold are as follows. Strong communication skills and networking skills. The main job skill of investment banking is persuading and convincing a client. Selling an idea is not easy. It requires all around communication and presentation skills of the investment banker, which includes using spreadsheets, slideshows, etc. Also, investment banks need the capability of making connections with people and industrialists from different culture. Otherwise, they will lack the client base they should have, right? Next is strong financial modeling skills. A financial model is a tool which is built in Excel, which is used to forecast companies' future financial performance. It involves using the historical performance of the company, making assumptions for the future and using that data to generate financial statements which can be used to compare and analyze the performance which company might have in the future. An investment banker must possess deep knowledge in the mechanics of financial markets. How does the financial market works and what kind of instruments are traded in the financial market. The most important skill which investment banker must have are valuation techniques. Valuation is the analytical process of determining the worth or uh, prospective worth of a company or an asset. The valuation techniques which an investment banker use are derived from the operations of the company's business management. They also have to look into the capital structure of the company, etc. There are two approaches which are used by the investment bankers for valuation. First of them is liquidation based asset approach. In this, uh, investment banker assumes that the company will be liquidated and then they derive the value of that particular company which is done on net cash basis. That is if all the assets are sold and payment is received and all the liabilities are paid off. The net cash remains is the valuation of that company. Second approach is going concern asset based approach in which investment banker assumes that the company Company will carry on their operations. This can be done in two methods. Market value based approach. This is the most standardized or most commonly used approach uh, which uh, determines the value of a particular company on the basis of comparison which is made with the similar companies which are sold in the past. The value of a particular company is determined on the valuation prospects of similar companies which are sold in past. Second approach or second method in this concern is discounted cash value method which is also known as income approach. In this the prospective future earnings of the company are discounted to the present value and accumulated to calculate the valuation of that particular company. 
to conclude today's video i would say that investment banking have become a highly demanding dynamic and sought after field banks's expectation have also changed with the new candidates earlier they used to hire graduates and train them on the job but now they have shifted from hiring uh, hiring graduates and expecting that they will perform from day one and add value you can choose an investment banking career after your graduation or after your mba or if you are beyond that but to enter into investment banking you need to demonstrate high levels of academic work and inter- and leadership experience otherwise you won't be able to succeed and enter into the wall street that's all from i side for today's video i hope your investment banking doubts and queries have been cleared with this video please subscribe our channel to have some more contents about different career perspective and courses we'll be coming up with new videos in the same perspective thanks a lot